Yes, hello. Uh, here I am, John Carrots, Crazy John again with OSH Radio. And today I have Thomas Carroll on coming from London, England, yeah, across, the, across the Atlantic Sea. I always think of that old uh, hair song, you know. I don't know if you ever saw hair. Claude Hupitakowski, Across the Atlantic Sea. He's from <laughs> Manchester, England, that guy. It's a good song to listen to. It's funny, but... Uh, I'll have to check yeah, it so, out. So you are with us today, Thomas, to talk about uh, mental health and mental health awareness. Yes. And, uh, and you also, we were talking just briefly, 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 and uh, how that can affect uh, how people think about, like myself, having gone to space and, and, and doing different things. But we're hopefully hoping that it opens up. So well, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us about yourself, Thomas, before we get into more other things. Uh, give us so, a short little history. Of course. Uh, so about 10 years ago, I had a mental health problem. I was um, a drug addict and I ended up having what's called drug related psychosis. Um, so after I had that episode, I got into recovery. Uh, I was very thankful to our NHS service who helped me out throughout the process, um, which we do have here. here. Uh, it'd be a bit harder for people like yourself in America because with psychosis you lose touch with reality and I, I really can't understand how um, with your healthcare system that anyone can actually make it through with, uh, through that because you have uh, almost like a pay system don't you is that right well, we do it's, it's interesting like uh, my job uh, working at my day job, they do have a, a function. You can go and you get free service, uh, a couple, for, like four free visits, and then mm -hmm. you pay a, a smaller fee and stuff. But it, it, it doesn't always the, – the, I've seen the people that really have pro a problem and really need the help seem to fall through the system, and uh, it, it, it's hard – it, it just doesn't always work out, really, to be honest with you. It, yeah. It's sad, but it some of the people I've seen that really could have used the system the most, it, it doesn't work out well. So if, for instance, if someone was in the same situation as I was, now I lost complete touch with reality, I lost complete touch with um, my emotions, and money was another thing which I lost control of at the time. Um I'm back on my feet now. I'm doing very well. Thank you to the services that were there in place to help me through it. Um, it sounds like you probably should have run for American politics at that time. You probably would have done terrific. <laughs> uh, well, again, I was, I was actually speaking with Ben Zion about this kind of thing before, um, about how there is that psychological element to politics. Um, which is played a lot and you actually do find spikes in uh, admissions to mental health facilities uh, during electoral time. So we've just gone through an election just now. Literally today is the results day over here in the UK. And what we will see is a, a huge spike in people getting admitted to mental health facilities in the NHS where they can't quite process what's happened. I think you had the similar thing with when Obama <laughs> was, uh, when Obama came in and when Trump came in. Uh, you did actually both in both instances. You would have probably seen a huge spike in people dealing with stress. Um, mental health is usually based around trauma. Um, it's a body's natural defense to try and start analyzing and working out what's actually happening. And it's just the way that the grey matter actually begins to form and, and start to, uh, to manifest itself. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a tough time, especially when politics are involved, to actually see how it plays out. So how, how long uh, did it take you for recovery? So I was actually quite lucky. So, as I say, I was, I was a drug addict at the time. Um, I went into an assessment unit for about three weeks uh from there i then went into a uh, i was being monitored at home uh i then that was about another month and then i went back inside to an actual um psychiatric facility and i was there for 
three months roughly four months possibly um so it and then throughout recovery was at least three years after that uh where i was on different medications monitoring making sure i was okay making sure i was back in the world and actually beginning to function again i heard I, we were talking previously in uh back dealing with band and music i guess you said you were in, in the entertainment area at the time also but uh dealing with three people i dealt with in the band and how they handled uh addiction and problems you know they all all three handled it differently one one i believe is recovered and he's doing good one mm-hmm. is no longer with us and uh the third one as far as i know he's still in and out of prison uh due to his addictions and problems it leads to violence and that's what ends up so it's it's interesting it's... how uh, yeah it's always been within the uh, music industry that you do get that kind of, of thing bec- because it's not the most uh, fluid cash flow that actually comes within True, yes. that kind of industry. And it can cause that effect of you either need an escapism such as drugs or anything like that, or you begin to stress, you begin to have these traumatic experiences that then can then manifest themselves into other things like that um again with the politics and of it you do find again in poorer areas they'll have more mental health problems than they would in an area where there's a bit more flourishing well you know i found you know even in the industry of, of music i found a lot of people that had problems had some other trauma that bothered them though also like uh, a lot of ex-military that yep. uh, were off in war and the trauma of actually being being in war kind of led them down that direction or started them in that direction and then coming back to society and having a hard time with it. Uh, Again, I don't know that, if you, that I, I goes know. back to the trauma aspect of it. And right. there are actually things in place um, going along the tr- transhumanist line, um, which are there such as uh, virtual Iraq. Uh, which is a simulated going, uh, simulated trauma experience. So they can get them to relive that memory and sort of come to terms with there was nothing they could actually do um, for that. And it's it's basically a virtual headset that they can put on and and see the experience and help them through their, their recovery. So what is it that you'd like to get out there and tell people about... Uh your experience and and what where you would hope that society might go and uh, how you would hope maybe for society to change and so maybe help people more so for me it's mainly about getting people's awareness up getting them to actually remember that every one of us has a mental health and we are all responsible for looking after that mental health um it is on yourself to look after it and it's your responsibility to see what around you is actually triggering, uh, causing you to stress, causing you to have these experiences and trying to sort of separate yourself slightly from those experiences. Um, you've got to also look out for the other people around you. When I was ill, I was the happy, smiley person. And it's you've got to check on the smiley friend. That's, that is another very important aspect of it. Um, yeah, you don't necessarily know exactly what's going on in someone's mind and what no. they're showing outwardly. We are working on it again for the transhumanist aspect of it. Um, there is the there are groups which are looking into the actual um, the wiring of the brain and where exactly these problems actually start to persist. Now, the problem with the study of Neuro, uh, neurology and things like that is that they can't induce these things you can only see it afterwards so what they do is they actually can they can they can block out the magnetic field of the earth uh, in this room you sit inside it and they put these monitors on the head they measure the actual um, magnetic fields of the shocks and they can actually tell exactly where the neurons are firing and with that, they're working on figuring out exactly which patterns are, of uh, brainwaves are actually 
causing these different effects such as psychosis, such as uh, DID, which is dissociative identity disorder, uh, schizophrenia, all these different mental problems that they can get. And with that, what they'll be able to do eventually is map the whole thing and of where these brainwaves actually start. Um, unfortunately, they can't. It would be very unethical of them to put someone through it until they got to that point of breaking to see it. And that's the kind of area that we would need to see. I hate to be a slight bit of a devil's advocate here, though, but in the, mm-hmm. in the old days, I used to interview a lot of different kinds of uh, entertainers, comedians, musicians, and a lot of them would have issues uh, and they would have medication for it. But actually, a lot of them complained to me that their uh, creativity would actually go down when they were on the medication, that actually uh, the fact that they might have had different mental issues actually help with their creativity. And Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about that? I mean, it's an interesting, it's one of those things is it's, they have something that might be considered a problem, but then one of the aspects of their mind, their creativity is actually sometimes fueled or aided by what might also appear to be a problem. So it's kind of an interesting issue. If you catch this, uh, if you catch things like this early enough, so for instance, my one, um, what had happened was my my brain. It's I had a there's a, a gland inside your brain which actually starts to make uh, it helps you focus on rea- on perception, basically, and that began to shut down and stop making a chemical. Now, if it's caught early enough, they can actually begin to repair that with the medication. And you, the medication you can come off of eventually. So for me, as I say, recovery was about three years. During that period of time, I would have said that, yes, my creativity, my emotions were stunted. But I'm off of them now and I'm actually able to generate normal conversation. It's, um, it's about catching it early, getting it fixed and getting back out there. It's much like your leg. If you break your leg, you wait for it to heal before you start walking on it. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I was just curious what your thoughts were on that. Cause I know how some of them would kind when of it, uh, go when back to teeter totter on it. You when know, it's something it. like a career, like comedy, uh, that if that is your, the thing that's actually helping you make money and that's what's actually getting you going, I can completely understand why that would, would hinder someone. But um, then again, you have to worry about, cause sometimes you see entertainers that, you think to yourself, why did they do that? Or why did they, they might end up killing themselves or having some problems. And if those were the issues that actually helped drive their art, it might also be dangerous to them in the long run, if that makes sense. You know, you might not realize that, although it helps them with their career. There's always uh, been daredevils out there. There's always been people who would uh, throw themselves in front of moving trains to try and (laughs) do a bit of entertainment, you know? Yeah, Um, that's true. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting, interesting point. Uh, But uh, so where, where would you like to see, what would you like to see maybe change in society uh, and uh, what awareness do you think needs to get out there and who do you think should be pushing it to make people know more? So it's, the, the problem we have is that things like uh, psychiatry are used in advertising, politics. Um, they're used in just every day-to-day life. So I, I actually went into sales a couple of years ago. And one of the first tricks I was taught by the head sales guy was to mimic people's movements to try and make a connection. I've heard that too, yeah. And it does work in helping sell, but it also, you're creating a false narrative. Uh, we, pick, we pick up on these natural, uh, we are, as humans, are these animals which are pattern seeking. And when you pick up on these patterns uh, constantly and they're false patterns, it can affect your mental health eventually. So when you've got these things poking up in advertising, uh, when you've got them poking up in politics, um, in all aspects of, of life, really, that's when it starts to affect people. And we just need to be a bit more conscientious of other people's mental health as well. It's like I was saying about checking in on your, your smiley friend, because usually they're the ones, they're 
you know. well, it's an interesting point of what they might be putting in advertising that no triggers other things but what what effect does that have on people in the long run uh, there's a few shows I watch and I know it stimulates me emotionally and I, I joked about the fact that wonder if they're not doing those subliminal messages you know like uh, showing a picture real quickly of someone crying or something just to stimulate you to feel more emotional and and I, I wouldn't always put that past them because I know in the past they used to play games with experimenting with that. And it's, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's it's been around for a long time. And if you look at um, mentalists, for instance, these uh, the psychological illusionists like Dar uh, Darren Brown and uh, others that I can't even think of at the moment, but um, they do these experiments to show you how subliminal messaging can actually influence you in these ways and it is it is used in politics um it is used in advertising it is used in sales it's used in all these aspects to sort of uh, just to capitalize really so uh, i am someone who um i'm always well, been a bit more on the social side um, they want to use it to make money for themselves and they don't really care about the long-term effects on you uh, yeah yeah. I know years ago that uh, Facebook, you know, everybody's Facebook had done some experiments uh, with a university with sending positive and negative uh, comments. Mm -hmm. And they, certain groups were only let to get the negative comments and certain groups were only let to get the positive comments without them knowing that they were being restricted in what they got. That's right. And, and they, they had they to send the, an apology letter, didn't they? Well, they, they had to. to, but to the, everyone. But the thing was to see how the positive messages did affect the people positive and the negative messages affected the people, put them in negative moods. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, there's an old, it reminds me of an old joke, uh, uh, an old comedian, uh, I can't think of his name off the top, top of my head, but uh, Hippie Dippy Weatherman, George Carlin. He had a whole skit about uh, when the guy came home from Vietnam, he was already depressed and upset, and the guy got a, a scope sample in his mailbox and the scope sample was just one more thing that just pushed him over so uh you don't know well, my thing is they're playing games with people emotionally to get them to do what they want to either buy something or vote but you don't know what that person's already state is and you could push people into directions you're not expecting to exactly uh, yeah it's, it's um it's something that we have to be conscientious of. Uh, we have to realize that what we say, what we do does affect other people. And at the, at the moment, for instance, I'm, I'm going to go back to UK politics here. There is a, a there is a divide across our, our country over here of the left and the right. Um, numbers wise, it's very similar. It's, it's pretty similar, but um, the you do get people who gloat because they've won or you get people who get angry because they've lost and the things that they do are pushing the ba uh, the boundary and the politics in the wrong directions of what they actually want. They're, they're, it divides us more by actually arguing. You need to get a conversation going and see yeah, where we don't. Your politics right now seems to be, I hate to say, it's kind of mimicking ours. I think, uh, as far as also your new, your new uh, elected official and stuff, and it mm -hmm. does seem to be mimicking our country kind of. And we, I think we, the same tactics were used to promote him. I like to think of Britain as the uh, the test ground for the type of politics <laughs> that uh, you guys have. <laughs> yeah, I heard it might have been being tested beforehand. It just took a little longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's pretty much, yeah, pretty much there. So now we also, before the show, uh, talked about uh, your hopes and stuff with uh, the space program. And uh, we talked about, you know, restrictions of of yourself because of having a mental health issue. And, and I talked about I had, uh, basically, I was legally blind in both eyes and had five eye operations. And how there would have been a time when you would be stopped by that. But I'm not sure that this is the day and age where it will be. Uh, I think eventually so, you're going to get to the point where there's going to be, you know, I, I, I wish that we were going to space for another reason right now, but I think the space defense uh, is going to help push people get into space. But I think there's going to end up being a lot of private contractors that get there. 
And I mm -hmm. think that's going to open it up to a lot different people as long as, I think as long as you have an issue, but it's being taken care of, I think that it's going to open it up to more people than it would have in the old days if you were military yourself doing it. So that's kind of how I look at it. I'm hopeful. So, I believe that'll happen. I, I, again, I'm very hopeful for that. I think I'm more likely to be able to get there via space tourism and things like that. Uh, space contracting, I think going up there with heavy machinery and things like that, it will be stigmatized. Um, there's no doubt about it. If you're going up there with working with about 20 to 30 guys to mine an asteroid or something like that, um, and you're using heavy, dangerous equipment, they're going to want to make sure that those people are pretty well grounded. Now, unfortunately, as I say, mental health, it affects one in four people. Um, someone will, ha uh, will suffer from a mental health issue. So my, my fear is, though, that uh, it would be someone that isn't being watched that might have a problem that they don't know of that might snap more than someone that's already being watched. Yeah. I, I might feel safer with someone that's being watched and be and probably be taken care of. And there might be somebody that's borderline that just, uh, sorry to use the word, snaps. Mm -hmm. So I have that fear. The person that's already being watched and, and is being taken care of might be a, a better risk, to be honest with you. I, that's kind of how I'm feeling because I think there's I, a lot of I things. Agree, I agree with that. I do agree. Um, I think there's a lot of people that hide things. Like you said, watch the smiling man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, watch the person that seems like they're okay. You know, I mean, we used to joke at meetings, uh, you know, people in suits, and we'd always joke, you know, you know, he's in that suit and he's dressed real nice, but you have no clue he could have underoos, like Superman underoos on underneath the suit. So you, you don't know really what's lurking. Outwardly, they seem fine, but... Mm they might actually be the ones with the more psychosis than the one that you're concerned about. Exactly you know, that. So. Exactly. So the person who's, so a mental illness is not a sign of a sign of weakness. It's a sign of being strong for too long is a, yes, a way a that point, yeah. I've, I've, I've always seen it. And if you've got that person who is having to show their strength all the time and hold themselves constantly eventually they will break um it's it's I, I don't want to say it but it's kind of physics in a way if you keep tensing something eventually it snaps it's the same with your great your gray matter it's the same with your mentality um and there are ways of monitoring it now so going back to the transhumanistic aspect we are getting to the point where we're mapping the brain enough to actually understand it a lot more uh we're at the point of writing the the um, dms books where we're pretty got we've got a pretty good understanding of these different uh disorders and uh, mentalities that people have so we're, we're getting there at trying to, uh, trying to figure out the best way of of working out who is unwell and how to help them now people that would be listening to this what what kind of uh what what sites or organizations do you think would be good for them to look at for a better understanding or what type of books might be out there you think might be good for people to read or so the dms5 is probably the best one at the moment um so that's um a book of it's literally the the handbook of mental health and psychology uh, that's a great one for actually looking through and seeing what kind of disorders actually there are, um, which ones could possibly affect, affect yourself and understanding that, that mentality. There is also Mind, which is the charity which I do a lot of work for. Work for. Um, so I've raised quite a bit of money for them in the past doing different charity events. Um, they are an English-based charity and they're extremely extremely good at uh, helping out with that kind of thing unfortunately well, sure. uh, they're sure. called mind 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 and do they have a website they do yes uh, mind.gov.uk i think it is i also did notice that talking about mental health that uh, i guess there's a high percentage of people don't realize of males that actually commit suicide and uh, 
there, I think there are a couple of newer organizations out there for how, helping men with uh, issues that you said about being strong. And people think of men as always being strong, but there's a high percentage of men that commit suicide. Yeah, and, it's uh, there's definitely a um, the thing of tos- uh, toxic men- masculinity where men feel like they have to be stronger, they have to be more emotionally stable, they have to be uh, the rock of the family. Um, And that kind of goes all the way back to the whole nuclear family thing, to be honest, Um, where the man was the head of the household. And, you know, this whole structure that we're told is the best way for us to be. The best way for us to be is how we actually perceive ourselves, not how... We, uh, not how we perceive society wants us to be. Right. So, okay, so uh, we, have a, we have a website for people to go look at a charity and some books. Uh, what, what, what do you think the future holds and how do you think uh, we should move ahead from here? And, so uh, what, do you, what do you hope that we move ahead from here on? Let me put it that way. Well, we're already heading there. So technology is actually <laughs> that, helping good, us. That's good, yeah. Yeah. So uh, technology is really helping us actually understand mental illness. It's also helping us to come up with new therapies and new treatments. So as I said, we've got Virtual Iraq, which is a system for helping people recover from trauma. Uh, we've got, um, you've got the Insight Project, which is a thing coming out of Cambridge, uh, created by the guys from uh, who did the game hellblade now hellblade was a game which was based on psychosis and mental health issues um and they really helped uh, they actually won a bafta trying to get the game um uh, to do they sorry they actually won a bafta with this game because it helps um people understand how, what it's like to actually have psychosis and they're now actually moving on to other mental illnesses and other mental health projects. Uh, they actually released the, they're actually doing a sequel to that game. Um, they actually came out with the information earlier today, got announced uh, for the new Xbox. Um, but they are doing projects into understanding and mapping the brain and uh, figuring out how to help other people with psychosis and how these technologies from the gaming industry can actually help it. So now, now let's say with your life, now where would you, you yourself personally, where do you see your life going and are you going to try and be more active with, with helping other people or are there other things you want to try and go into to show that people that have had this can function fine and overcome it? What, what so would I've you d- like to do future in the future? So I've already done a couple of talks um, on mental health issues. Um, I've gone along with uh, psychiatrists and help them uh, help them to explain to people who have had psychotic episodes um i've done some videos uh, for mind as well uh, for mental health awareness day and i've run a couple of times for charity now the next thing i've got planned is i am actually writing a book on uh it's psychology and politics so pretty much what we've been speaking about today it's um I've literally, I'm about 30 pages in at the moment, so not that far along at all. Uh, but I do have a month booked off to, to literally slog it out. And after that, I am trying to get involved with the Dutsi Canoe Race, which is a race in South Africa. It's a 66 mile long canoe race. And if you break your canoe, you have to run alongside the uh, thing picking up the bits of canoe and running along with him so um, that will be my next charity event which I do for mental health and when, when did you say that'll be and is there a website about that that people can look into that into the doozy I haven't uh, it's only in the planning stages at the moment I'm actually looking for a, uh, a partner to do it because it is a doubles race but um, yeah it's, hopefully that will be I'd say probably in the next two to three years. Uh, I've just started training for it, so we'll see how it goes. Well, I wish you lots of luck in that. Uh, what what are the, so how, you've only gotten thirty pages into your book? Do you have a publisher set up? Or are you going to do that through Amazon, or how are you thinking of publishing? No, that? I haven't got a publisher set up yet. I want to see how it's. Um, up. So I'm, as I say, I'm only in the writing stage, 
So what I want to do is take it to a couple of people, see how, uh, see what they think about it first, and then uh, see if I need to change anything before I take it to a publisher. So I just want to get a little general census of it. I've done a, a few books, and years ago I did one that was used by some universities, and uh, that that works out nicely if you get a company. It's something that a company like we went through McGraw Hill for that, and they actually did take care of a lot of stuff up front. And of course, when you're not a known publisher or, or not a known uh, writer, you don't get as good a percentage as as a better known person. But uh, it's a lot of things out there today that make publishing a lot easier, and uh, I wish you a lot of luck with that. But if it is something that is of interest to a university, you would find that it's easier to get it done and, and a backing for it in a lot of places hmm. to use it. That might be interesting. Yeah, I've I've, I've definitely got to look into uh, the publishing side of it more. Um, I have spoke with a couple of people through the the Lifeboat Foundation. Um, there's a couple of publishers on on there, so uh, I'll see where it goes from from that. So uh, now, now you yourself. Now, if people want to watch Thomas Carroll, is there uh, websites or anything where they could track you and want to keep online to see how you're doing with things, and maybe watch you to see how it goes when you go to South Africa? Currently, is there some way for them. Currently, it's just my Facebook. Um, there is a video on my experience with mental health on punkrockhealth.co.uk. Um, where they've got a list of different videos and podcasts which are going going through. If you just look for the Punk Rock Health podcast uh, podcast on all the different platforms, um, it's it's pretty much on on most platforms of podcasting. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess we'll wrap it up here. What would be your uh, final message you want to get out to people there and uh, and uh, to tell them about this? look after your mental health just make sure that you're going out looking after the people around you uh make sure that you're keeping yourself happy keeping yourself well uh, a healthy lifestyle does help with a healthy mind so just keep going at it and if you do start feeling unwell you start hearing voices or anything along those lines do seek help well, well, thank you, Thomas, and I'm, I'm glad you made it through your stuff. And like I said, I've dealt with uh, bandmates that have had problems, and uh, it, it does, like, one didn't turn out well. And I'm glad you got through it, and Thanks you're here so to, to try and help other people and help make the awareness there. Uh, and like I said, though, my concern is the people that are out there that you said the – I'm going from the opposite side. You said you, your smiling friend might have a problem. But I'm, my issue sometimes, I'm afraid, is that there's people that seem to be fine uh, that might have problems that aren't being taken care of or they're the ones that could hurt somebody else because you don't know what's going on with them. Yeah. And uh, so that, that is a concern that people don't always realize. And, that's, that's, and, and, and to some extent, we talked about politics and sales. and uh, You don't know how they're pushing people to get what they want that could actually send people over to the other side. And that's, uh, kind there's of, no uh, actual physical aspect of it. Uh, you right. can't just, you can't just spot it. You and, don't know what's, it, you don't know what's hiding behind those eyes. It's a form of, uh, well, I'd say that the politics and sales is kind of, it's a form of uh, abuse, but it's, uh, not abuse that people know they're getting. And it's a, it, they yeah. could be triggering and pushing buttons on people and, you go yeah, into a, a car salesman today and he's going to try and sell you it and he's going to be <laughs> affecting it. And eventually you walk out of there, your pockets are empty, you've got a car which you didn't really want and you're going and the stress starts setting in and the mental health starts coming out. Yeah, that, and that can be so many other things that people don't even realize. And that's mm -hmm. Well, thank you very more, much, uh, Thomas, and, and I hope uh, people will see this. They get out and they check out the books, the websites, your charity, uh, track you, and maybe even friend you on Facebook. And maybe there's people that can reach out to you that you can help them, help them directly even. That would be great. I mean, even if you help one or two people and they help other people, that would be fantastic. Hopefully, it'll exponentially grow. One voice in a cave. That's the way yes. I always one say One voice it. in a cave can, can echo and, and help a lot of people. Exactly. Well, thank that. you very much, and uh, thank, hopefully no, we will you. talk again soon. And uh, we can we'll, hopefully soon we'll see. You, I'll see you on Mars. How's that? You know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. You never know. 
we can we can be there. Uh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm wondering myself sometimes how I want to go. Uh, if you're so. looking for a round trip, I'm I'm always up for trying. <laughs> <laughs> round trips might be better. Yeah, I'm not sure about the one way stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much. Have a good.